Russell Brand has been all over the media due to an investigative documentary that was released by Channel 4 last week. The documentary is called Russell Brand in Plain Sight and it features four anonymous women who are speaking up against Brand as they discuss past experiences with him. Just a reminder, these are all allegations as Brand hasn't been charged, but regardless, some celebrities have spoken up about their interactions with Brand and actually adds on to the allegations surrounding him. Hello, I'm your host Melanie and we are going to be counting down our top 10 celebrities speaking out against Russell Russell Brand. For number 10, we have the comedian London Hughes. London took it to X, formerly known as Twitter, to share how she always knew to keep a distance from Brand, who she claimed was a self-confessed addict when it came to women and seeking intimacy. She stated, I was newly signed with Russell's agent at the height of his career. I was a huge fan of the man. So excited to meet him. But my first day at the agency, I was told unprovoked that I shouldn't sleep with him under any circumstances as he likes to pursue women, have intercourse with them. She continued by saying, but as soon as he had intercourse with them, they'd make him feel sick and he didn't want to be around them anymore. So he would have them fired or dropped from the agency. It had happened several times in the past. I was 22 at the time, did what I was told and completely avoided him. This is not some cheeky misunderstood man. I am not shocked by the documentary at all. I believe everything those brave women said. London's statements proved there was a power imbalance when it came to other women and brand. These girls were probably scared they would lose their job if they came forward or worried no one would believe them. At number 9, we have the crew at Big Brother. Russell was actually representing Big Brother's Big Mouth on Channel 4, ironically, from 2004 to 2006. Well now, the crew members who worked alongside Brand have come forward to discuss his behavior on set. These employees were working for the production firm Endemo while this was occurring. Well now, these ex-employees have come forward to actually call Russell Brand a pimp. Brand would allegedly ask the showrunners to go to the audience members he found attractive and ask for their information in order to meet up with them afterwards. There is not only a power imbalance when it comes to Russell and the staff, but also the audience, which makes this whole situation even trickier. The ex-staff member stated, we all knew he was a predator. There is no denying that he was involved in a lot of complicated sexual situations. Another staff member described the workplace environment as a free-for-all due to everyone being culpable as they all knew how he was like. Another stated, I distinctly remember getting phone calls from women in tears the next day saying they'd met up with Russell. It was like we were taking lambs and to slaughter. We were basically acting like pimps to Russell Brand's needs. Another showrunner who was 24 at the time claimed Russell flashed her in the dressing room. This whole situation, if true, is devastating as I'm sure the staff members felt compliant as he was such a well-known public figure and their jobs were probably at risk. In our 8th spot, we have Daniel Sloss. This comedian, actor, and writer was apparently one of the first to publicly speak out against him. Hundreds of sources who have worked with Brand, including other comedians and celebrities, were asked to speak up about Brand for the documentary, but Sloss was the only one who was willing to speak on record. He reveals how several women comedians were in a WhatsApp group chat together where they would warn each other about Brand. Sloss stated, I know for many, many years women have been warning each other about Russell. He even further added, there were many stories. It wasn't just coming from one person or one group of people, it was different incidents over different years and of varying degrees of severity. He was a big name, big, big household name. If you were a comedian and got a gig with him, you'd be gigging with a celebrity. I'm stood in bars with agents, promoters, channel commissioners, and I'm hearing these allegations and rumors with Russell in the same room. And later on, he would be on a movie or a television show, he would be hosting something. He was still being employed. If this is all true, it seems like those in the industry itself seem to have more insight on brand while he was able to keep his image squeaky clean for the public. We have the director of the Hijack series, Jim Field Smith. Although he hasn't directly identified who he's talking about, about, many believe it is about Brand himself because he tweeted a series of tweets after the allegations. He refers to this mystery A-list celebrity as Actor X and he claims this actor has powerful people working alongside him in order to protect their career. Smith actually said he turned down working with this person because of the claims surrounding their behavior. He states, I was once dissuaded from hiring Actor X because other actors I was meeting for other roles had heard X might be attached to the project and had said unequivocally they would not work on the project in those circumstances. He further added, there were no criminal allegations against X, but rather a pattern of behavior that several people had either noticed or been personally subjected to. When I asked these people why this wasn't common knowledge, they said that speaking up didn't seem like it would make a difference. He continued to say, this was really troubling. After not much deliberation, the casting director and I decided not only to seize negotiations with X, but also, more importantly, to be very open and honest about 
about why we were doing so. If Smith is referring to Bran, it means they have addressed these claims to him, which is troubling because it seems like he has a repeated pattern as many feared him behind the scenes. At number six, we have the anonymous former model. This ex model, although anonymous, has shared her alleged experience she had with Bran as she spoke with the son. She met him back in a bar in 2005 located in Primrose Hill and she claims to have told him to leave her alone but he proceeded to follow her onto the streets as she says he grew increasingly creepy. While walking through the streets of London, Bran was following her while she was walking alone. She shared how it felt like a lifetime. Russell then apparently shouted at her and stated, let's just right here. She then further added, I felt like he was hunting me down, it wasn't flirty or fun. The word predator is absolutely spot on. He was dead set on his goal, his intention was to have sex with someone, anyone. That is extremely frightening and honestly, some of the words she used to describe Brand has also been used by multiple women. For our number 5 spot, we have Danny Minogue. This Australian singer and TV personality had an interview back in 2006 before any of these current essay allegations surfaced. She first met Brand when she was set to appear on his show to promote the release of her album. However, she was left with an awful experience. When interviewing with the mirror, she states he is completely crazy and a bit of a vile predator. I certainly don't think he has cured his addiction, that's for sure. He wouldn't take no for an answer. The way Danny described Bran sounds a lot like how other women described him, with words like predator being a reoccurring way to describe him. A lot of people are resurfacing this interview, especially because of the recent claims and because Danny said all of this about him before anything about Bran was made public. And for number four, we have Sean Locke. This comedian and actor had a resurfaced video that has recently been shared after the essay allegations. Back in 2013, Locke stated, Probably the reason I hate him so much is because I'm a dad, and I've got this fear that my daughter will bring someone like that home. This is a huge red flag when it comes to Brand's behavior, as it seems many people have the same stigma and opinions on him, and especially when it comes to Brand's treatment towards women. Locke actually then proceeds to do an imitation of Brand and says, Such a pleasure to be your charming abode, while waving his arm in the air. It's clear Locke had his opinions about Brand before Sally passing away away in 2021. In our third spot, we have Adam Rowe. This stand-up comedian wrote a thread on X describing his knowledge and experiences with Brand. He did end up taking down this tweet, however, the screenshots are posted all over Reddit. He stated, Russell Brand's allegations far outdate his new anti-mainstream media stick. We've all known for years but have been threatened with legal action and he has a super injunction. Dispatches must have enough to surpass it. When I say we've, I mean the comedy industry. It is clear from our list so far, many comedians themselves are speaking out against Brand, as I'm sure many of them worked pretty close alongside him, as they are in the same industry. Adam also believes Brand is attempting to pull off the victim card as he wants people to believe the mainstream media has gone after him. In fact, he described it as quote unquote, Reverse engineered as he believes he's known for a long time and has been preparing for this moment and spent his recent years putting up an anti mainstream media persona. At number two, we have comedian Sam Avery. He actually took it to X, formerly known as Twitter, to share his opinions on the ongoing essay allegations against Brand. He wrote, People talking about Russell Brand like he's the only person to ever question the establishment, big pharma, etc. Nah, mate. He's just the one with good cheekbones who uses long words. That that make you feel intelligent. The dude's less authentic than Astro's turf. Sam made it pretty clear where he stands with Brand as he has now publicly said in the statement about why he doesn't like Brand and suggests why people are still supporting him amid the essay allegations. In our first spot, we have Katy Perry. Of course she would be on this list as she was once married to Brand back in 2010, but Brand actually filed for divorce 14 months later through a text message. It actually gets worse as he sent this text message right before Katy was set to perform and this moment was captured on camera. You're able to view this footage through the documentary called Katy Perry Part of Me as we see Katy getting emotional as she gets the news but quickly has to put on a smile as she hits the stage. While this singer had an interview with Vogue back in 2013 about her relationship with Brand and said, he's a very smart man, a magical man and I was in love with him when I married him. 
At first when I met him, he wanted an equal. And I think a lot of times strong men do want an equal. But then they get that equal and they're like, I can't handle the equalness. He didn't like the atmosphere of me being the boss on tour. So that was really hurtful. And it was very controlling, which was upsetting. She then added, let's just say I haven't heard from him since he texted me saying he was divorcing me. Katie has also discussed how she felt about the divorce and stated, I felt a lot of responsibility for it ending. But then I found out the real truth, which I can't necessarily disclose because I keep it locked in my safe for a rainy day. It's clear the two weren't right for each other as it seems Katie has gone through an emotional roller coaster while in a relationship with Brant and even after. Although she hasn't commented on the current situation, it's clear the relationship dynamic these two had was harmful and damaging towards Katie. Although these are all currently just allegations, the Sunday Times has reported multiple other women have been coming forward with even more allegations against Brand. Due to these reports, they are apparently being rigorously checked and what are your opinions on all these allegations against Russell Brand? We would love to hear from you below.